Hi, this is the video for you to uh, help you cut out your beret pattern. By this point in time, you should have already traced out your pattern pieces, which is a donut and this stick looking piece. Um, make sure that when you trace your patterns that you have traced, that you have also indicated the grain line, which I'm going to let this go, is this one line with the arrow, uh, and that you've done all the little markings that are in pink and all the wording that's in pink. If you haven't, that's not going to help you when you go to put together. These all indicate different things. I'll talk to you more about that later. So, you'll end up with something that looks like this. These are your pattern pieces that you're going to use. Now, I talked to you about that little arrow, that straight line with the arrow on both ends. That is an indication of your grain line. And the grain line always corresponds with the straight grain of your fabric. What's the straight grain? That's this edge that runs along. The, the selvage edge is always an indicator of your straight grain. It is the path that goes all along the length of the fabric that goes on the bolt. There's always two selvage edges. Um, this is a scrap piece of fabric, but I've got at least one selvage that I can see. You're going to make sure that this grain line that you have like on this headband part is going to be parallel with the straight grain and you can do that by measuring and this kind of easy right now because I have the selvage edge there and I can just place it right there but I'm you can also take your ruler and measure in a certain distance from one side of your grain line and do the same thing on the other side so that your line, your grain line on your pattern is parallel to the straight grain of the fabric. In this case, I only need one piece of this. One, and it should say on here, and it doesn't say, I'm sorry, just say cut one. So you're only going to cut one of these. Again, I'm kind of saving fabric so I'm coming to the edge and I'm trying to choose my straight grain line. Pin your, pin your stuff down. Notice that this pattern piece has all the little markings. Some of those are uh, to indicate the center front, the center back, uh, fold line, so on and so forth. So pin your pattern piece down enough to where that it'll stay in place. I'm not going to pin around all the edges because I don't think it's necessary. Now when you look at your donut piece, you've got to cut one with a hole and one without a hole. The other thing I didn't tell you is that you want to work from the back side of the fabric. I am right now on the back side of my fabric. My front side is not quite as shiny and that's the side I want for my front. So the reason I'm working on the back is because I want to do markings on it to help me afterwards. So I don't want to mark on my front side. Okay. So now I've got to cut two donut holes. Now I could fold this over and cut two pieces out at one time, but for right now I'll save more fabric if I just cut them separate. Um, and this is a scrap piece of fabric. I have enough, but then I'd have to move this piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. Again, there is an arrow on here that indicates my straight grain. So I know that I'm going to place that grain line parallel with my straight, straight grain on the fabric. So I'm going to go right here. This pattern already has seam allowance in it, so you don't have to worry about adding any. And that is pretty much it. I'm just going to use this to hold down. And I'm going to pin it down. Notice that the straight grain does not run along with the center front and the center back there will be a bias on the center front and center back. <clears throat> I'm going to pin this down as well. You will need about a yard of fabric, three quarters to a yard of fabric to do this beret. And you will also need a little bit of like muslin that you probably already have for interfacing. And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. 
Now I only have one of these pattern pieces, so that means I have to use this twice. One time I'll cut this around, and um, actually I'll cut both of them, and only one of these I'm going to cut this hole out. So right now I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. Notice that I'm not lifting the fabric. You should always keep your fabric flat as you can on the table. Especially if it's wiggly fabric, you don't want to change the shape of your pattern piece. And since I've cut into the fabric and I already know that this is a straight piece, I'm probably going to use a straight edge as an indicator for my straight grain. I'm going to put this piece to the side because I'm going to use it again to cut the interfacing. Now I'm going to cut my first donut. Probably could have brought it closer down to the edge. Stay pretty close to, you know, your pattern. Um, you'll change the size if you cut it too generous or too small. And all that hammering that's going on is upstairs with the theater, the stage, so sorry about that. Okay, I'm not even going to cut the center hole out now. I'm just going to take this piece right now and cut the next one. And I, like I said, I know that this is pretty much straight, so I'm just going to, again, working with my grain line, my, my, on my pattern piece, and what I think is a straight edge. And, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I changed my mind because it will make it easier for you to cut the other circle out. So, oh, I should have done that. I did something wrong. I didn't mark my center front, my center back, my side, and my other side. If you don't do these markings, when you go to sew it, it's going to prove difficult for you to line it up in the right place. So I'm going to go here and mark. Oh, I guess, no, I'm, on this one, because I'm keeping it whole, I don't have to mark the inside. Just have to mark the outside. So I'm going to move this, and I'm going to make sure that I let this, somehow I have to tell myself that this is the front. So I'm putting a CF. Can you see that? CF. That tells me that this is my front. Okay, and I'm going to put this piece to the side. Now, I'm going to cut one more piece. And i got to set it up again. This piece, we're going to have to oops, mark the center as well. But I'll show you. So, again, I'm pinning through the paper. It's a lot easier to pin through this than that poster board, so trace it through. Um, this is kind of popped up there too. All right, here goes. We're almost done cutting our beret. And don't forget to mark your center front. Oh, my fabric is not letting me right. And again, I'm marking on the back side of my fabric so that I know that um, that maybe it won't show. And then I'm going to have to cut this inside piece. So how do I get to the inside? Well, you can take a pinch snip on it and then get in there. I'm gonna, uh, let's see. I'll just go around this way. 
uh, when you, if this is your first time using fabric or cutting something out of fabric, don't pick a difficult fabric. Um, go to something cottony. Some of the upholstery fabrics are easy to work with. If you pick a velvet or something that's stretchy, it might pose some problems for you that uh, you didn't know were going to happen. Okay, so now i got a piece that really looks like a donut. But again, I have to mark some things to help me out when I'm sewing. I'm going to have to mark the center front, the side, the other side. And these markings should already be on your pattern or the back in the pattern. So that when I take this out, I've got some indications on where I'm supposed to connect to what. You didn't mark it well enough. Yeah, I do. Okay, so let me see what that looks like underneath here. Yeah, I got all, all my marching. This is side, center front, this is going to be center back, and the side. So if you want to just put that together to the side for right now, you can do this. There's one more piece you got to cut in order to, to cut your beret. Do not try to put this on your head at this point. If you do that, you're going to stretch your fabric and things are not going to go sew together right. So make sure that you wait for the next step before you start trying anything on. I got to cut some interfacing. Again, this is a piece of muslin. This is my selvage edge right here. This is the end of the fabric, the you know, side edge. And I want to get one more of these. What interfacing does is it adds a little bit of body and um, it just kind of gives it a little bit more strength if it's going to take a lot of strain, so on and so forth. So I'm not even going to worry about placing, I know that's my straight grain. I'm just going to take the other pattern piece I just cut, go ahead and pin it over it. You can, you know, take the pattern piece, do it separate, but me, I'm just going to keep all my pieces together and just cut it. Um, you will want to do the markings on this as well. So I'm going to cut this. I'll come back around. It's probably going to be most important for you to put the markings that we need right on the muslin. So, I know <clears throat> if I turn this over and I look at the, this side, I know that my center front, mm, okay, never mind. Let's take the piece off. Whatever you do, you just got to get those markings on there. So, maybe it is a good idea to cut it separate. Looks like it's even a little bit bigger. Let's get it to the right size. All right, now I'm going to mark my center front. I'm going to mark my side. This is where you connect the side piece to this band. Um, half inch in here, we didn't mark it here on this side. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, I'll put it there. Half inch in. That is actually your center back. This other half inch is just your seam allowance. Uh, you can mark this um, half if you want, this half part, um, but that's basically just a fold line. Because basically you're going to stitch this on here. Again, it's just your interfacing. You're going to stitch some round parts. I'll show you more about that later. And this is going to end up being a band that goes around your head. Okay, so um, we're going to need those markings. So make sure you transfer markings. All of these patterns have half inch seam allowance all the way around. So um, you know that you can, you don't even have to mark the seam lines in this case. You can just use the machine guide. But um, that's it. That's what you you have to do so far is to trace these pattern pieces, cut a long stick and an interfacing, a donut shape with your markings, 
and just a round wheel, I guess, with your also with your markings on the edge. There's my side seams, back, front. And then we're going to start putting these together, but there's another step that has to happen before that, and that'll be the next video. Okay, talk to you later. Next time.